Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, hello, whenever you are watching this, welcome back to another edition of That Mill Podcast. Uh, it's going to be Thursday when you guys are listening to this, um, so congratulations on making it to the end of your four-day week. Hopefully we can make it a little bit easier for you to get there, and we have a double bill of Millwall to look forward to over the weekend. Um, today, uh, well, yeah, so we're recording this on the Wednesday night. If you guys listen to it on the Thursday, you'll be listening to it tonight. I'm cap- uh, the preview is going to come from me, uh, Negative Dan. Omar, how you doing, mate? I'm good, mate. How are you, mate? You right? Yeah, yeah, not bad. I've I've actually finished work for the week, so uh, looking forward to a nice few oh, days off. You. It's gonna be it's gonna be uh, brilliant. And uh, Jay's also with us tonight. Jay, good evening, mate. Evening, chaps. How are we? We're all good, mate. We're all good. Um, good. Now, uh, Stephen is not here tonight for reasons we do not know. He wouldn't comment. Who knows where he is? He might <laughs> he might be out. I don't know. Um, well, Mickey, he, he, he's, I was about to say, you never know. Him, well, <laughs> uh, and our leader, Mickey Simpson, he is he's out. He's I think he's leaving the country on Thursday. So when you guys listen to it, um, he's going to Turkey. So place your bets what he's going to come back with, what uh, what additions he's going to have. I'm going for, I think he's going to be looking like John Travolta when he comes back. I don't know what do you think. <laughs> I think he's going to come out of turkey teeth. How about that? There you go. I thought that one's going to be John Travolta with turkey teeth. What do you reckon to that, Jay? I think he's going to have the works, mate. I think he's going to be lipo, hairs done, tan, the lot, mate. He's going to come back looking like Katie Price, I think. Well, so that will give you something to look forward to and uh, Mickey's back in a couple of weeks. So uh, in the meantime, all abuse that would usually get directed towards Mickey needs to go towards Omer and Stephen. Um, so anyway, we're going to crack on. So you guys obviously listen to this on the Thursday. We're in action tomorrow. We're playing West Brom, uh, a team that are in the playoffs at the moment. Obviously, we come into the back of this game and our last game was that defeat to Leeds United. But we had won two home games on the bounce. Um, Omer, would you say reason to be kind of optimistic going into this game? Yeah, I think we've spoke about it obviously in recent shows and stuff, but Neil Harris has brought a lot of optimism back to the club in a sense that we can get a result. I mean, is it going to be pretty? Is it going to be, you know, tiki taka football? No, it's not. But what we're going to get is, you know, a team going in fighting for their lives and trying to, you know, graft out hopefully three points. But yeah, I think calls for optimism, but I think obviously West Brom are a team hot in form at the moment and, you know, up in the playoffs and, you know, Sir Jed Wallace is returning, isn't he? So it's going to be an interesting affair, mate. I think we'll touch on uh, Jed Wallace as well as there's a couple of players actually who uh, have crossed paths between the baggies and the Lions. So we'll come on to that in a moment. Jay, uh, how do you feel going into this game? Obviously, West Brom now aren't in bad form themselves. They stuck four past Huddersfield just before the international break, which obviously did us a favour as well. Yeah, exactly that. And look, look I, I, exactly what Omar said. Look, New Harris has brought a real sense of belief, not just to the club, but playing at the den again. And West Brom, you know, any team, it doesn't matter if it's West Brom or whether it's Rotherham coming to the den, it's going to be difficult for teams now. The crowd is a sellout. I've read today that there was less than a thousand tickets. So it's going to be booming. The den's going to be rocking. Um, we'll set up in typical fashion. It'll be come and beat us. If you can beat us, you're welcome to the points. But it's going to be our graph for West Brom. But, you know, like you said, two two wins in the Harris era at the den, back to back clean sheets at the den, more to the point as well. Um, oh, yeah, optimism, definitely. I'm probably going to curse us now here, but I don't actually think we have a terrible record against West Brom, particularly since we've been playing them in the last few years. I think I can only recall one defeat to them, which was just before we went into lockdown in 2020, where we did lose 2-0 at the Den. Um, did we get but, turned over in that game that was on Sky when it was like pissing down with rain? I yeah, yeah, that's not. Yeah, that was, that's yeah, not I, I, I didn't know. Did, did, because yeah. I was meant to I tried to get down there, and I failed attempt to get there. But yeah, I think away from home we've been quite decent, haven't we? A couple of draws. Yeah, and stuff. And, but, um, we should have beat them away from home. To be fair, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, I missed the penalty. Didn't yeah. we? We actually played well. Last season, yeah. we obviously beat him 2-1 at the Den, Tyler Bury, who remembers that name. Uh, he, he scored the <laughs> winner. Yeah, exactly. And then the season before that, we won 2-0 at the Den. So I don't know whether we're something of a bogey team for West Brom. It's just, as I said, I don't really recall them getting the better of us too many times. And I think when you look at our games after this, the, the uh, Rotherham game, and in particular Huddersfield game, which is shaping up to be a six-pointer, I think if you can get a win, maybe even a point, depending on the performance and, and the manner of the point, then it's going to be good to maybe get a bit of momentum going into two big games in close succession after this one. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to get too carried away myself, but I mean, look, it's it's a, I think Friday's obviously, or tomorrow's going to be a big game for us, but I think 
listen, it wouldn't be nice if we got six points this weekend and just that was it, job done. Because it feels like it's going to be a couple more wins to get there. And I think that must be something of an incentive that Harris is drumming to these players. He's had a couple of weeks with them on the training ground. A few players weren't international jury, but it, it could obviously it'd be nice. I mean, is it feasibly going to happen? Who knows? But you know, it focus on Friday, but then with Monday set up as well. You know, if you get a result on Friday, I think you follow up on Monday, we feel all but safe, won't we? I feel like. Jay, if yeah, I offered you four massive. points from six now, would you take that? Oh, oh, absolutely. I mean, you you look at it now with the position we're in, five points clear of the third from bottom. If you take into account goal difference, that's six. That's a six point differential we've got between us and the bottom three. So, if you can get four points out of it, you know one. of where, however, way what way round that comes, whether that's a point at the den and three away, it doesn't really matter. It's the Huddersfield game that, for me, is now the most important game of the season, because if if we can get at least a draw at Huddersfield, just don't lose at Huddersfield, and we pick up four points before that game, then the, the gap becomes massive, and then it's another three games down, and that could be looking easily like near enough twelve points. Um, that we could be clear, you know, you've got um, Birmingham have got to play QPR. A lot of these teams have got to play each other. So as long as they don't better our results, I'll take the draw every game to the end of the season. You know, it is just about bettering the teams around us. But yeah, no, I totally agree. Four, I think we said it on the previous pod. If, if you offer us four points now, without a shadow of a doubt, I think you have to take it. I think also we need to keep the home form up as well, Dan, I think. But that's yeah. the key part for me. Like, it's obviously two wins, isn't it? And, you know, he's, what is it, under a 1,000 tickets left at the time of recording yeah. today. It's going to be, you know, colossal on Friday. And I always say Neil Harris does well in front of a... Neil Harris team does, does well in front of a packed house then. We're going to get that on Friday. And hopefully the players deliver that. I think... Sorry, Dan, just to jump in. I think if you look yeah. at the remaining home games that we've got as well, like you just said, Omar, you know, playing mm. at home, the home form is going to be really important. We've got Plymouth to come to the den. They're struggling. Cardiff as well, they've got to come to the den. So we've got some games that are really winnable at the den. I think if we win our home games, or at least don't drop too many points at home, I think safety is inevitable for us. That's fair. That's fair. I don't... I, I was about to say, I don't want to be go and jump in the gun because this is the championship we are mill we know what we are capable of we know what this league's capable of um and five points isn't a massive buffer but when you consider the how many teams there are in between us and you'd have to say 23rd really because sheffield wednesday credit where credit's due to him have given themselves a decent chance of staying up which i don't think many Mm. of us would have given them a couple of months ago so you've got to say they're in that mix but we've got a nice We've got a decent points cushion for this stage of the season. A lot of these teams are still going to have to play each other. And there's so many teams in there to the point where I'm not massively panicking at the moment. And as as you touched on there, Omar, it's going to be a, it's probably going to be a sellout. As we said, less than a thousand mm-hmm. tickets remaining. You would imagine they'll they'll be gone. West Brom have also sold their allocation. They'll be ringing two thousand down to the den uh, for Friday lunchtime's game. Um, and this is the type of game that you would have feared under Gary Rowett. Millwall going into a, a sellout den. Yeah, you don't really. Fear, fear that anymore. The club, it, it's still a long way to go until we could say we, we've got our Millwall back or what this maybe new, old, hybrid kind of style of Millwall football club is going to look like. We don't know. But we've got we've got a little bit of it back, haven't we, chaps? I think so. We've got a guard to get against complacency, but I think that's the one thing Harris will be, you know, like, it's, it we're getting carried away. I mean, like I said, like, it's magic six points this weekend. Is that going to happen feasibly? The chances probably are very slim, but... I think the one thing, you know, this division has taught us over the years. I remember the year with Jacket when we got to the FA Cup semi-final. We had Chris with the first half season. We're in the playoffs. We're, like, we're not going to go down when it starts to get towards the end of the season. And then we had the games in hand and kept losing, sinking into it. And then the last game of the season, we relied on Palace scoring against Peterborough to keep us up. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> you know, like this, this division has taught us over the years. You just can't get complacent. It's got to be game by game, really. And I think... That's what Harris will be driving into them. And that's what he's been doing since he's come in. When he, when he first came in, it was like, focus on Southampton. Focus. And then it was like literally game by game. And I think that would be the message to them. And, you know, obviously we're confident because the position we're in now, but the job's far from done. But, you know, that carrot will be dangled to them. You know, a couple get wins this weekend probably would keep us safe. And it's a great incentive for the players, I feel like. Yeah, 100%. I, I totally agree with everything I just said that Harris knows this division. He knows this football club. He knows how to get the fans going. He knows the, the, how to get the best of the ability out of these players. He signed most of these players. So mm. he, he knows exactly what boxes to tick, what buttons to push. Um, and he's brought it back to basics. It's, it's all about disciplined positional play 
off the ball, making sure everyone does their job. And and he's done it in such a manner where we, we can look over our shoulder a little bit. As you said, the, the job isn't done far, far from it. But, you know, we'd rather be in this position that we're in than being in Huddersfield position or, or in Sheffield Wednesday's position. So Harris has done a fantastic job. Whether that leads to him being the long-term guy, we still don't know what the view looks like beyond this season. I don't think we can even think about talking about that. But yeah, as Omar said, look, this this is the championship. It's Tuesday, Saturday, most weeks for 50 weeks almost. And and you every week it changes. Norwich, who were right at the top at the moment, they I think a couple of weeks ago, they were sitting in eighth, but their point differential was closer to the bottom three. They so, were calling for their manager's head not, not that long ago, weren't and they? they? Remember was call- when exactly they played that. Up? Exactly that. It is a week by, week by week basis and you can't take any point you get in this league for granted. Exactly. Just want to touch on uh, our visitors' form. Um, I've just had a look. They've lost one of their last 10 games. So these are two kind of informed teams that mm-hmm. are going to be going into this game. As I mentioned, they beat um, Huddersfield 4-1. They beat Bristol City by two goals to nil. They drew 2-2 to QPR. Um, they beat Coventry 2-1, drew 1-1 to hold. The last game they lost was in the middle of February, they lost 2-0 to Southampton. But since then, they've been on um, they've been on a great run of form. We know it's going to be a tough game. They, they seem to be a well-organised team. They seem to have a lot of energy. It's Carlos Corbran, you know, someone who was under Bielsa's wing um, for a long part of his coaching career, you kind of expect. So I think it's going to be... I think it's going to be a different kind of challenge. I think they're going to be pressing us very high. And obviously, where we're going to try and knock the ball a bit longer is going to mean... It may be a different game to what we've seen recently, particularly in comparison to the Birmingham game. Yeah, I mean, I, I like Corbyn. I think, you know, considering the off-field trouble they had at the start of the season and stuff and everything around it, to, for them to be where they are, I think, what, seven or eight points clear in the playoffs? The, he's done a remarkable job for them. And, you know, they've got a good squad there, you know. There's three transfers they made that summer before last. You know, Swift is, in, is still in there, I think, if I'm not mistaken. You know, yep. Wallace is obviously their captain. And, you know, they've got players in there that can cause trouble for us. And I think... They're quite a physical side too. I remember that Sammy Ajayi, the centre half. So look, they'll be up for the fight Friday, and you know Wallace will get him up for it. He's the captain there, and I think it'd be interesting to see the reception he gets. I know I touched him earlier, yeah. so we'll come back to him. But it, that's you know, it's a good side there, good players, and I think Wallace is even playing further up the field nowadays. As Matt said, well, so. last few games, Jed Wallace has actually been playing up top for West Brom, which is we. Saw, yeah. I mean, we saw him play in a central role. We saw him play at times up top in a five-three-two. Mm-hmm. Um, under Gary Rout up top of Mason Bennett. It looks like he's been the most recent game they've played, at least, has been up top in, as a lone striker in a 4 2 3 1. So that'll yep. be something a bit different. But I think that kind of tells you about the way they're going to want to play. They're going to want to, when they do get the ball, they're going to want to play play football, play it quickly, get it forward to him because he's going to be the one that can make the runs and really stretch the defence. I think that Yokozula in midfield, the Turkish geezer as well, scored an absolute wildie against the um, He did against Huddersfield. not seen it, watch it back. It comes across him, wallops it, top corner. And like, you know, look, they've got good players in there. Even Alex Mallet, who used to be at Barnsley. Like, it's, it's a good championship side and yeah. you know, they, they'll they, be up for it. They know the league inside out a lot of them. Players, they've got, so they've got a good blend of like, Championship stalwarts, players like Sami Ajayi and Cedric Kipre and Moatu, players who have been around the, the, mm. this level for a long time and know what it takes. And then they've got good flair players like um, Jed Wallace and Mikey Johnston, who they signed on loan from Celtic in, in January. And he's, he's been absolutely phenomenal for him. I think that's going to be a, def- a really tough battle for Ryan Leonard, presuming he's the one who's going to keep his slot of right back. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's definitely going to be a tough game, isn't it, Jay? What do, what do you, how do you see it panning out? What players do you think could be key for either team? Yeah, that, that young fella that you just said come over from Celtic, he is, he is a player and a half. He is. I watched him at QPI. He scored an absolute weldy. And at Hull, he's, he's, he's making good. his own goal of the season competition based he's, off the goals he's scored so far. He, he's a fantastic player. And like, like you said, you know, they've got pace, they've got a good balance of strength, physicality, and they can get the ball down and play football. You know, Corbrow's a great manager in this league. He's a really good manager. They're tactically sound. You know, everyone knows their job. They, they work really hard. And, and a Harris type, mentality, you know, they chase everything down. I know Thomas Asante has been injured, which is why Jed Wallace was playing through the middle, but he's done very, very well there. Um, yeah, that, they're going to cause us whole manner of problems, you know, they're, they're good all over the field, they're good at the back and, and it will be a test for us, but you know, they're going to probably press up really high, they're going to probably come onto us and that will play into Harris's strengths a little bit because we will sit off, we will let them have the ball and they will probably hopefully commit too many men forward and then we'll be able to hit them on the counter, which is what Harris wants us to do. So yeah, I, I expect them to come straight after us soon, soon as the whistle goes, but 
you know, it's going to be just as difficult for them to break the break us down as as it will be for us. So, but they're they're a top quality side, and they're my team to to go up in the playoffs. Yeah. I, I, I make you right on that second point there. I actually do think they are. I think they'll probably be the team mm. um, going off on a little bit of a tangent here quickly, just on about the playoffs. As we know about the playoffs, it can often be momentum which carries you through in the playoffs. And if you look at some of the um, teams that often have been the third best team in the league, they might have missed out on automatic promotion in, in such a heartbreaking way on the final yeah. day. And that, that, you know, they're not in good momentum for the playoffs and the playoffs are all about momentum. So I think West Brom is definitely a very good pick. Um, right, we've managed to go about 15 and a half minutes without talking too much about him. So let's address the elephant in the room, chaps. Jed Wallace is coming back to the den. <laughs> yeah, um, I hope he gets... Do you know what? I think when the old players come back, some people hang on to him or some people want to... Listen, let's have it right. And it's the same when anyone comes back, including ex-managers and stuff. Give him a round of applause. But as soon as that whistle goes first minute... To the Not, the minute, yeah. Not the Millwall, I know. Not the Millwall, I know. No, no, no. This is how it is, though. Like, if I saw Jed outside, I'd be like, hello, Jed. And because, you know, I think he got he clawed a bit of it back last year, obviously, coming down when Berylson passed yeah. away and signed that book and stuff. And I think he, he, the reputation amongst the fans, it was a bit marmite after last season when he, I think he assisted the goal and celebrated in front of Carbolona. And I remember saying a few words at the time. But listen, when the game's yeah, on... That would have been right in front of both. <laughs> yeah, right correct. Of Bofors, yeah, correct. Correct. <laughs> and when that game's on, listen, it, it, it condenses that 90 minutes of you're going to get a hold of uh, loads of abuse. So I think I think that surprised him last year. I think that's what caught him off guard because it's like, oh, Joe Wallace come back. He's been here, what, seven years on and off and... You know, everyone put him on a pedal stool and rightly so. He was our best player for a lot of that time. So, but, you know, even though the best of the best get a, a toxic recept reception when they come back to the den and on Saturday or Friday, he's the opposition. And for that reason, you know, he will get it again. But that's that 90 minute window where you just you give him dogs abuse. And at the end of the game, he'll probably clap us. I'll probably clap him back. And that's it. Do you know what I mean? It's like you get on with it. It's football. I actually think yeah. before the before the game last season, he... um. He tweeted, someone tweeted him and said, what kind of reception do you want, uh, Jed, during the game? And yeah. he said, um, I want a small round of applause for a start, dogs abuse for yeah. 90 plus minutes or whatever, and then another small round of exactly. applause at the end. Is that going to be a tough rep uh, reception you give him, Jay? Yeah, look, he's he's going to get that. He knows he's going to get that. He wants that, you know, and, and he does deserve the plaudits because he was a fantastic player for us for, for a long period of time. He's very consistent. But also he is the opposition player. And he will play on it. He will try and rile the crowd. He does that. We've seen him when he goes down for corners. He'll have a little look at the crowd. You know, he'll he'll G his team up. You know, he, he will play on it. He will push our buttons and we will get on his back. And we won't make it difficult for Jim Wallace because he's, he's the type of player that thrives on that. He enjoys that. He's a bit boisterous. But it will be feisty and um, it will only be a good thing for us because the crowd will react and the crowd will be loud. So it will only be a good thing for us. But yeah, look, Jed was a great player for us and credit to him for coming down from the Midlands when Berylson passed and to show his respect as well. He clearly still cares about the club. He tried to make a, he made a bigger move. Let's, let's be honest. West Brom's a bigger club. They could pay him a lot more money than we could have. And they've got aspirations of making the Premier League, something that we're probably a good few years off, depending on where we go in the future. So yeah, look, I don't mean, I don't wish Jed Wallace any harm. I don't, mean him any displeasure you know he, like I said great player for us he's going to get stick he's going to expect it and he's going to play on it and it's just going to make for an even better atmosphere at the den I think it got to him last year though I think it, it did, did. You know? it the very first, he didn't expect it. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think, because I think, because it's us as well, and it's his old club. I think it does add that extra element to him. So I don't know. Maybe we need someone to proper give it to him before the game, or I don't know. Yeah. Don't go personal yeah. with it, but you know, do the mill twang on it. I mean, Dan, <laughs> what, what kind of reception are you going to give him if you see him? <laughs> I mean, it is a tough one because after after last season, I'm I'm not really prepared to. I wasn't really prepared to give him much of a of a gracious reception. But then he's he's for me he. I know you said he pulled back a little bit. I think he pulled back quite a lot, to be honest, mm. by being on pretty much the first train down the day after the club released the news and yeah. being one of the first people to sign the book and uh, condolences. I think he pulled a lot of it back for me. So um, I know I was giving you stick about not the mill, I know, but to be honest, I think <laughs> I think it probably it probably will be. And I think I think he's going to, I think as you chap said, he's going to play on it. I just hope, you know, it doesn't, really inspire him and his team because I remember one time uh, we were playing Wolves this was when Kenny Jackett was the Wolves manager and they were winning 1-0 and he brought on James Henry and mm -hmm. I don't know what happened but somehow just bringing on James Henry we we ended up going 3-0 down James Henry came on I think he got two assists and we went 3-0 down now we did come back to draw the game 3-3 so 
Um, what was story when, I'm trying was to that tell? That when Fuller scored a couple goals. For, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not and really sure whether I'm trying. To... Late, then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not really trying to sh- uh, trying to say whether this is a good, whether that's a good or bad thing. But we're going to do it anyway. Listen, he's going to yeah. he's going to be expecting it, and he's probably going to be more used to what he was expecting. I think wasn't that the game? Sorry to just go off on a tangible. Wasn't that the game where James Henry was through on goal as well, like late on, and Sean yes. Williams just absolutely I was about to say, yeah. and took yeah. one for the team there. And yeah, we card. needed that. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> a, yeah standing yeah. ovation red card. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes you get got to be one yeah. of the only grounds in the country where you can get a standing ovation for a red card. That's it. Yeah, time. that's it. I, I remember Shane Lauer getting a couple as well like that, actually, to be fair. Just a couple I mean, Sa- Savile got one earlier this season, didn't he? He got a standing yeah, ovation. Norwich, 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 Norwich. On the subject of him, he's not played international, has he? And he no, got we, out are, we, are gonna, we are going to come back to that very quickly yeah. because okay. um, there isn't... Um, Wallace will not be the only uh, X-Line in the baggies ranks. Obviously, Jason Malumbi. Uh, who remembers him from the from the lockdown years? Very good player. Very good, very good player. player. I don't think he's going to... Um, play i've just been reading actually he's been out having surgery he is due back around now um but i don't i think this game might come a little bit too soon for him but um yeah i mean he's a, he's a great little player isn't he i have very fond memories of watching him play harris first, player a, a harris type player you well know, harris, was the, one, harris, harris was the one harris was the one who brought him in yeah mm. perfect player for us and would love him there he's a bit more seasoned now you know he's physical he's big he's strong yeah love jason malumbi and you know we can't get you can't give jason malumbi if he was to play too much stick he was a lone player um, and he'd give everything he had for us, and you know he went on to bigger and better things. But yeah, he was a, that's... yeah, he was a lone player, a very good player. Diff- obviously, different, I think, to yeah. Jed. I think, but I don't. I but please, never... he's not going to be playing. No, that's, I was about to say, yeah, because because yeah. I, I think we know uh, what Omer would be probably having a bet on if he was. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's that? Then? What's that then? <laughs> probably, Jed, probably Jed Wallace and Jason Malumbi to score at any time. <laughs> <laughs> and then judging, I'll, by, I'll your predi- my judging by your I'll prediction, judging for your prediction by the Leeds game, probably um, Mill to win by uh, to nil as well, probably. Yeah, Mill to Mill, yeah, Mill to win to nil, and Jed Boyce score any time to take that one. <laughs> well, Jed, if you're listening, mate, if you want to stick one in your own net, that'd be greatly appreciated. So Emma can win his bet as well. Uh, that'd be fantastic. Um, but I actually do think that Jason Malumbi segues into George Savile quite nicely because I think they're quite similar players and. Yeah, I mean, in my head, it probably seemed a bit nicer because I was like, I was going to ask you guys the question: if if Savile wasn't to renew his contract, would you would you take Malumbi back as maybe someone who could replace him, but being quite a similar profile player? Yeah, I would. But I mean, but I don't know if that boat probably is long sailed. I think with Malumbi, when you mentioned his low spell, I don't know if it was an option or not, but I felt like it was similar to the Charlie Creswell situation for us last summer, like where the club could have and maybe should have shown a bit more ambition to try and get the player over the line. I mean, maybe Creswell's situation is a bit more different because Lee's boy gave him a contract and obviously the new manager's not taking the fancy to him. But I think with Malumbi, it was quite obvious that Brighton weren't having him. They were on to pastures new in the Premier League and yeah. you know he came through their ranks. And maybe if we showed a bit of ambition, we could have still had Malumbi as a player now to this day. If, if my memory's correct, they kept him for six months after his loan spell with mm. us. They, they gave him a new deal. Yeah, and then he went on loan to Preston. I don't think he had a yeah. particularly great spell at Preston. Um, went back to Brighton for six months, then went to West Brom, and then West Brom signed him on a permanent deal. I think exactly. they only actually paid around about seven hundred and fifty thousand pounds for him as well, which is actually which a is really a, good a business. still for a player like that. And I think Ratty yeah. got chewed out of him towards the end of that season before the lockdown. I remember him scoring that that ghost goal that weren't a goal for him. Matt Smith claimed it at um, Forest. Yeah. Forest. Yeah. It was a great celebration for Malumbi, but it weren't his goal. And I, I think, you know, I, I would have bit your hand off if we could, could have got him after that, even if it was a season afterwards. And probably that ship sailed now because I think West, West Brom love him and the fans love him. You we were right, he's been injured since the start of the year. But yeah, I'm thankful he's not in the squad, to be honest, because he's a player that can, he thrives on the sort of occasions that the Den might provide. I was about really. to say, and, yeah, the, the atmosphere, I feel like he'd be the type of player to to enjoy it to be honest Absolutely. Um, yeah definitely yeah right let's let's move on then to talk about George Savile obviously was called up for the Northern Ireland squad has stayed with the Northern Ireland squad but hasn't played and then um, for those of you who, who may not have seen it um, Neil Harris has said that George Savile's been nursing a calf injury um, and they're waiting to see the full extent of it there's a possibility he might be back for this weekend uh, yeah for Friday this weekend there's a possibility he might be out for something slightly longer term Jay what, what do you make to that news Concerning, definitely concerning. He's a massive piece in that midfield. You know, he, him and Harris's relationship is not quite 
what you see from managers and players, you know, they, they really do care about each other. And Harris really trusts George Savile. You can see that. Um, he's he's the leader on that field. I know Cooper's got the captain's armband, but George Savile is the leader on that field under, under this under Harris. Um, yeah, it's definitely concerning, especially with B Billy Mitchell's limitations in terms of being a leader and being able to lead the line. I expect we'll see Casper come in, which would be welcome to many people. Um, Casper's a great player. We can't can't um, ignore that. But I would like George Savile to, if if there's any inkling in that he may be risky, I wouldn't play him. I just wouldn't play him because no. we are going to need him in the long haul. If it's a case of him being out for for this weekend and we're getting back for the rest of the season, then you you have to drop him. But we've got a luxury there where we have got Casper Denore who can come off the bench and fill in that gap. When Casper come on for Billy against Leeds, he in that short um, time frame he was on the field, he tripled Billy's passes, tripled his, um, I think, uh, uh, receptions on the ball and, and, and looked like he fit in to what Harris is trying to do. Now, a lot of people, myself included, would have said that he's not playing because he doesn't quite fit what Harris wants to do. I think he showed that at Leeds a little bit. I think he come and played very well. So uh, if I'm Harris, I wouldn't risk it because he, he's so important, Savile. He really is. I just wonder how much of it is, because um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it was two friendlies for Northern Ireland, wasn't it, this international yeah. break? So maybe yeah. it wouldn't surprise me if there was, even though he stayed with the camp and all that sort of story behind it, you hear about you know players pulling out tactically and stuff like that, or managers I mean, speaking. Look at, look at the whole England squad. Correct. Yeah. So like, so like, it wouldn't surprise me whether Millwall and you know maybe they might have had that kind of chat and Savile might have been open and honest with Northern Ireland setup. It wouldn't surprise me if he starts Friday. If I'm totally honest, but I'm with Jay obviously on that. You know, if it's if it's a case of he's not fit for Friday but he's fit for Monday, then to me you want him available for the game against Rotherham more than anything. Yeah. But that said about the Denor story, I, I think I agree with you. Denor came on and made an impact, but I, I just question whether if we're saying it's a game where we won't have much of the ball, you want Savile for that sort of game on Friday to yeah. battle in that midfield. That's the thing. It's a real kind of balancing act there. So I suppose we'll only find out at two, oh, 12 o'clock on Friday because so, it's a 1pm yeah. kickoff, so don't get caught up on that one. I was going uh, to say, though, just, just an interesting point, obviously. We've seen Casper and Savile work. Well, they've played together a lot, un particularly under Edwards. Um, obviously, the the form throughout the Edwards era wasn't great, bar that little run mm. over Christmas. We haven't really seen Casper and Billy play too much together. Do you think maybe Casper and Casper could cover for Billy's limitations? Do you think that's something that's that's a possibility, or do you think that's asking? I'm not trying to play Billy down here a little bit because I think he's good at what he does. But do you think Savile is the better player, and that might be asking too much of Casper? I think with that, though, I think uh, Harris has name-checked the Nor a few times, saying he's been brilliant at training, playing well, and, you know, but I think he went for Sav and Mitchell based on their relationship from last season as well, under yeah. Rowett, like having that kind of chemistry. So that is the tough one, but then I suppose if you know Savile's not around, he's not been training, not at the, in the group, maybe they've been working on it for a couple of weeks at training, and maybe they've got to have some sort of understanding of their game plan for Friday, but I don't know, be interesting. I mean, what do you reckon, Joe? Yeah, I, I totally agree. I mean, the, how, like you said, Harris has name-checked Donore because he knows he's a quality player and he knows he has to address the elephant in the room as to why this quality player is not playing games. Now, Billy Mitchell deserves a lot more credit than I think some people give him because during that uh, winning run we had in December under Edwards, Billy Mitchell was was playing in them games. He comes out of the team, we start losing games again. Billy Mitchell's in back in the team under Harris and we're putting on a good run of form. So Billy Mitchell's a good little player. You know, he gets on the ball really well. I think his on-the-ball work is very under underappreciated. I thought countless times at Leeds, he, he slowed the game down, got us out of sticky situations, but he plays well with George Savile. Can he emulate that when he's playing with Casper Denore? I don't know. You'd like to see Casper with Savile. That would be the preferred. Savile's the aggressor and Casper's your let's play football. So that's the perfect scenario. But... um. But yeah, I, I agree to everything that Omar just said. Like, if there's a couple of players you do not want missing in this running, George Savile's in the top three of that list, alongside probably Ryan Leonard and maybe Jaffet and Tanganga, the way they're playing at the moment. No, I think so, I probably put I probably put Zian Fleming in that list as well, personally. <laughs> and, and, yeah, Zian Fleming. Uh, you know, yeah, and Zian Fleming for obvious reasons. But you know, um, yeah. So it's it's a real tough call for Harris. He's probably the biggest call he's going to have to make, considering that every position player-wise has been set in every game he's played apart from left wing 
where he's rotated with your favourite player, Dan, and Brooke Norton Coffey and, and various others and Duncan Watmore. You know, he's, he's rotated that. So this is a problem that Harris doesn't want to have. Um, it's not like the left wing. So, yeah, it's, um, but then what does he do with, with someone like Alan Campbell? Could he, could he come in? Could he play? I mean, he's probably that closer to George Savile than Casper Denore, but he, whenever he's played for us, he hasn't played good. I think the problem is as well, he has, he's been out <laughs> of the squad so long. I think you've got to worry about Alan Campbell's match fitness now. I think if he maybe wanted someone similar to Savile, I think maybe he, he might put Honeyman in and then he's got two of the three of um, Norton Cup. That's what or, that, or, I was going to come on to that. Yeah, you took the words out of my mouth. I would have probably put um, Norton Cuffey left and stuck Honeyman in in, in central midfield, and but and then on the right hand side, probably look at someone like Emaku or Watmore or someone like that. But yeah, it's um, it's like I said, it's a problem he doesn't want to have, a problem us Millwall fans don't want to see, but um, it's a problem that he needs to choose the right decision here because we don't want to lose him for longer than we need. No, absolutely. Um, gonna. Touch on another player in international duty, didn't play any minutes for his country. That's Michael Oberfemi. That's actually one that um, I'm actually not too upset about because with him being our only fit striker at the minute, I think the fact he, he's gone off, he's got himself, he's came here, he's got himself back into the Ireland squad. I think that's going to boost his confidence for a start. But mm-hmm. then the fact he's gone there and not played any games and unless he's picked up a training injury that we're unaware of, that's fantastic news for us because we, we do have to keep him fit at the moment. I don't know if I'd quite put him on that list of imperative players jay that you said you'd keep fit but if that was like the a list over femi would be on the b list and they'd be pretty high up the b list at this moment in time i think it was uh two unused sub periods as well wasn't it so i think it might maybe it's a bit of an incentive to come in back and you know kind of two figures back up because i think they lost both their games and didn't score um island if i'm not mistaken but i think with over femi he surprised me because I, I wrote him off when harris first came in i was like right he's not gonna you know he's the only fit striker he's gonna play but i think there's one game he came as a sub and people around me were caning him and just like say like, he's not putting it in but then a couple of games since and especially like you know I think it was Black Burley obviously got his goal the last home game was Birmingham wasn't it and he was running the channels doing the doggies and stuff for the team that I'd never thought I'd see him ever do because every time I've seen him he's been that player in the middle picking the ball up trying to do sharp turns which you still see a lot of from him trying to take it on and take players on but he really brought in I think to what we're about and I think yeah I mean it's I, I agree with you obviously he's not quite imperative to the team Dan but he is an important figure for us, and he's our only fit striker until Nisbet and Bradshaw come back. So I think yeah. they're to come back mid-April, if I'm not mistaken, right? They're trying I think, to get I back think for then. So sounds like Bradshaw's. There hasn't been much talk on this, but I think sounds like Bradshaw will be able to play some part before the end of the season. Which mm. I I don't think he's going to start over Oberfemi under Harris. From what we've seen from Oberfemi, he might do, but I also think just having another striker that might allow us to at least make a straight swap at times or who knows might even change formation yeah he, he's not getting the chance away from 4-4-2 Omar <laughs> never happening under Aris mate I'm afraid and I don't want that to happen either I'll keep, keep the 4-4-2 mate <laughs> but I think with Oberfemi it's, it's an interesting one because he is, isn't the side that he would fit into but yeah I, I, I've noticed it the last few games he's really brought into it and I, I don't know if that's Harris because he's always been big enough in the post-match press conferences and praising how good he is as a player and how you know he's a great striker and stuff. But you wouldn't have really thought it. But him and Fleming seem to have formed something up there, and it's working, albeit you know not really much from them up front. But it's more set plays typically. But there is something there brewing, and who knows? Maybe Friday's a day for it. Yeah, I'll, I'll totally agree with everything you said, Omar. I, think I was very surprised as well that he, he could have quite easily come in off the back of not playing and he got he got unwell as well at one point and he could have thought, you know, I, I don't want to be a part of this. You know, a, a place where in a formation and in a style of play, he's not going to get a great deal. He's not going to stand on the stat sheet with hat tricks or brilliant plays. He's got to work hard and, and he's bought into that and it looks like he wants to be here. I thought at Leeds, he was brilliant. I thought he played very well off the ball, held the ball up very well. Uh, probably take his chances a little bit um, sooner. But again, it's all match fitness for him. Um, yeah, I think he's he's going to be a big piece. He, he's going to be a big piece for us because he is the only fit striker. Um, and and he plays the position really well as a lone striker, which is what Harris wants. And there's no better person, really, that can get a tune out of a young developing striker like Neil Harris can. So it seems like Harris has bought into his strengths and his qualities that he can bring. And Oberfemi's took it all on board. And it's, it's pleasing to see. And he's got a big part to play. 
And I think as well, the crucial thing about Oberfemi before we move on to the next player that was in international duty for, for the Lions, I think the crucial thing for me about Oberfemi is that probably other than Idemo, he's got raw pace, which is yes. just something this squad does lack in abundance. He's physical. He's very physical he's a, as well. A physical player, exactly. So, yeah, that's why I think he, I think it is important we keep him fit. So, I think it's good for his confidence that he got called up. Um, but I'm happy that he's. I'm happy he got rewarded with a call up. I'm also happy he's not played any minutes. Definitely. Um, next player well. that was in international duty, uh, the third of four, I believe, was uh, Matthias Sarkic in goal. Didn't play Montenegro's first game. Played the second game, kept a clean sheet in a uh, after a one nil win uh, over North Macedonia. I mean, again, let's try and keep this one short and sweet. But another clean sheet for him. He's done well since Harris has came in. Confidence booster again, hopefully. Yeah, I think he'll be tested on Friday as well quite a bit and hopefully stands up to it. Like I said, albeit that, you know, West Brom seems to be, you know, good attacking players. But I think they'll be physically quite tough on us and set plays as such. And I think be interesting how he rises to it. I, I, I mean, I, I think he's done all right this season, Sarkic. I'm still not convinced long term if he's the real answer for us for the next 10, 15 years. But maybe he grows into the position because he's still relatively young. Um, he's 26 and he's, he's, years old. For a goalkeeper, still, that's you know, that's yeah, still, isn't yeah, it? I was I about to say, goalkeepers don't it, they're prime till 30. So, you, you could, I mean, if, if he wants to stay here this long, if the club won him, you've probably got 10 years of service in him if, if they still, if they found yeah, him, yeah, absolutely. I think he is buying into Harris as well. He, you know, he's simplified his game for him and just told him kick it long and don't, don't fuck about it at the back. And it's helped him and it's really just focused his game on trying to stop, hit the goals at the back of the net. So, I mean, yeah, it'd be interesting how he does Friday. I, like I said, long term, it hopefully he grows into the role. Um, and I think, you know, it, it we're already doing well and good getting a clean sheet for his national country and hopefully he brings it back to us, really. Yeah. Obviously, I think, Jay, I think a lot of us said he was probably one of our best performers against Leeds. Um, so to build on that goal for his country, keep a clean sheet, come back into this crucial run of games, maybe feeling even better about himself. Yeah, 100%. Look, you, if you don't mind when a goalkeeper goes on international duty, do you? Because it gets some game time and, and he, he's a confidence player. I think we've seen that he's a confidence type goalkeeper. Most keepers are, but he seems to be more so than, than some others. And, and that clean sheet will give it, will give him the world of, world of doing the world of good. Um, he seems to be more confident in the, in the front players he has in front of him in that back four. And and he's playing very well. He's made some real good saves, some real key saves that have kept us in games, that have helped us win the games. Um, he made a great save at Southampton away that, that helped us get three points. He was really good at Leeds as well. You know, that could have been a completely different scoreline. And in the games we've played at the Den, you know, he hasn't had to do too much, but he's confident when he comes for crosses now, which he was really not before Harry's come along. He was a he was a deer in the headlights coming for crosses. But yeah, he's confident. He looks better on the ball and it's simplified for him. We spoke about Harris going back to basics and Omar just said, you know, he, Harris has made it simple for him. Just knock it long. And and all we could do is ask him to keep the ball out of the net. And we're we're in this position because partly of how Matty Sarkic has played. And to Omar's point, is he the long term? Maybe, maybe not. He's the jury's still out. He's got to prove a lot more that he could do it over the course of a season. Um, but the, the signs are there, you know, he's, he's trending up rather than trending down as he was. So, yeah, it's, it's pleasing to see that he got a clean sheet on international duty. Playing for your country, getting a clean sheet is going to do him absolutely no damage whatsoever. So, yeah, no, it, that's that's good news. I do agree. And um, last player we're going to come into uh, now, and we just touched on a player that's, improved under Harris. This is someone who's maybe found it slightly harder under Harris than he did Joe Edwards, and that's Brooke Newton Cuffey, who was playing for the England under-21s. He came off the bench twice. He got an assist in their first game. I think they won 7-0, um, and he got the assist for the last goal. Um, I mean, I like Norton Cuffey, and I don't think he great. Grant, I don't think he had a good game against Leeds, but I think in terms of what we have in the winger positions at the moment, for me, he is, he is the best winger that we've got. He's not a right back or a right winger, is he? No, that's the problem I feel with all No, that, that's he's, he's, a he's, a wing, he's a wing back. Yeah, <laughs> he's no he's Danny McNamara, mate. A right back. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> but at this point in time, he's got to be. Well, there's no denying he's better than Longman. 
I reckon Imer and Jay would be better on the wing than Longman. <laughs> oh, don't go too far, mate. <laughs> Maybe if you're feeding, me a, pint, yeah, yeah, if you're feeding, feeding me a pint on the touchline, I might be able to do a better job than Longman. But aside from that, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, yeah, no, so, I, I agree to your point. I think, look, I think Britt Norton Coffee, that's that's his position now. I think he's earned that. He, he, Harris has tinkered with it, like we said, with Watmore, with Longman, and, you know, and, and with Brook Norton Coffee. And you said he didn't have his best game at Leeds. He didn't. But um, this is all learning curve for him as well. You know, he's he's had to go through three different systems now, coming in as a lone player, young player as well. So, yeah, going away on international duty, he's done himself some good. He'll be firmly in Harris's thinking. And um, he, it, the chances of him starting now are probably even more higher with the fact that George Honeyman might have to go into a central role if um, George Savile doesn't play. So, um, yeah, no, it's, it's good things from, from Brooke. And I think as long as he continues to do what he's doing, because he isn't playing terrible, he's he's better than what more. He's better than Longman. I think Harris will have him firmly firmly planted out on one of them wing spots. Because that is the only position out of the eleven that is not settled under Harris at the moment. Every other position hasn't been changed. There's been the same players every game, apart from that left hand side or that right hand side. Sorry, whether I it's think Longman, both, probably both wingers. Well, that's seen. Because lot Honeyman's played out Honeyman, there every yeah. game under Harris, isn't he? So yeah, it's probably the most unsettled position, but you know, Brook can make it his own and, and that opportunity's there. He's got seven, eight games left, obviously. I think he I think it's gonna be hard for him to get a look in at Arsenal next season. Yeah. Um but he's gonna be wanting to put himself in the window again, whether that's he's had two uh, three loan spells now in the championship, sorry. So he might want to be putting himself in the window, possibly for a Premier League move for next season. So I think he's going to have a point to prove. Um, I'm going to come back to your score predictions quickly, gents, because um, I think we've covered everything on international duty in West Brom. So for 10 minutes before we wrap this up, we're going to talk about the Rotherham game that we have on Easter Monday. Now, one of us is going up there. Um, place your bets as to who it will be in the comments. We'll pause for five seconds from now. Five seconds? Just do two. <laughs> right, well, there's the five seconds anyway. Who's going to Rotherham? This fucker over here is always, mate. <laughs> who, who surpri- who's surprised at that? They, 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 yeah, I don't surprise myself anymore. They suck you in, mate. That's, well, they suck me in anyway. I, was, I, wasn't, I wasn't going in. Then two minutes later, I had a ticket in my basket and it was bought. So there uh, you go. That's your finger slip, mate. The mill curse. I, it's, I can't describe it. I was literally in the office the other day talking to you like in the chat. And we weren't even talking about the game, really, I don't think, or talking about Rotherham. And I was like, right, who's going Rotherham with me? No one even said they were going to come with me. Uh, and then I just uh, bought Be- a ticket. Benjamin, Benjamin our northern oh, yeah, correspondent. Bend, yeah, but I mean, I'm just driving up there. Step, to be fair. <laughs> it's true. Easter Monday, I'm driving up there. Um, yeah, listen, I think since Harris is back, I've said it on the show a few times, he's brought that kind of buzz back. Even that going to Leeds, like... I didn't think we'd get a result. We all knew we probably weren't going to get a result. But even in that performance, there's stuff in there that, you know, that before the game I hoped for and we got. And for that reason alone, it's like, you know, that's why you, you go to the games and that's why, like, away from home, it's it's, just, it's FOMO. I'll be honest, it is FOMO. But I've had that for 10, 15 years ago in a way and it's not going to stop anytime soon as much as I want it to. <laughs> um, I, I hope we get a result. We should get a result. Knowing Millwall, when the owner says us to get the result, we won't get the result. So make of that what you will, mate. <laughs> I was about to say. The thing is, I think, I I mean, Rotherham have got to be pretty close to being relegated. I did see someone tweet, we could put the final now in the coffin for them. After what happened, was it five, six years ago when Harris was in interim charge? I think he'd probably like to get one over him if we were the team to finally put the nail in the coffin for him. Good point. Yeah, good point. Was it Clark Harris, the Peterborough striker, was there at the time and posted the tweet towards Gregory or something? Cause Gregory no, it was said... Steve Evans with his yeah, yeah, Evans, with yeah. sombrero. Yeah. Just like... I'm pretty sure Clark Harris done something as well. I'm going to I'm gonna fact check it myself afterwards. But um, Wasn't well, that the Bristol Rovers game? Clark Harris put that out because we beat them down at their place to make the playoffs. It was like 4-3 we beat them, wasn't it? I think I, I, I think I think the Rotherham thing was just Steve Evans having a dig yeah, at yeah, Gregory. I, I remember seeing a tweet because I think Gregory said two games before to go like Rotherham he still needs to get result and we'll have to get results and stuff and then we lost. But yeah, I mean Rotherham, I've not been there since that season. Oh, was it that season? It was Holloway, wasn't it, at first that season? And I remember going yeah. there and lose one nil. We, I think we lost 2-1, maybe. I think it was 1-0 up, maybe. I remember Gregory missing the chance in the first half through on goal. And then afterwards, we, they scored at the right up the other end and the ground erupted and it kicked off in the, in the near corner to the right yeah, end, <laughs> next, to the, to the, next to the home end. And yeah, it's, it's an interesting ground. I, I'm looking forward to going there. Um, 
yeah, I'm still hoping to see the Chuckle Brothers or one of them has actually passed away, hasn't it? I suppose yeah. so I should, probably shouldn't say that. But when I think Rotherham, it's an interesting place to go to. We should get result, and I'd love to get. I'd love to read a game after six, seven years ago. You're right to mention that, man, and fingers crossed we do that. Yeah, um, but as as Ima just said, Jay, when the onus is on us to get a result, we we know uh, we know no. what Millwall can do. I'm more confident in us beating West Brom than I am in, in beating Rotherham. That's just a Millwall way. We, if yeah. I would rather our running of the last seven games be the top seven in the league because we'd turn up and we'd beat them. We've always been a club where we could beat the teams at the top, but we can't beat the teams at the bottom. It's just the Millwall way. It's always been that way. But, you know, it's a different manager now, although he has been here before. And there's a, there's different things at stake. You know, this is championship survival. The money is different next year now. Uh, us going down is is going to be so bad. It will be so bad for this football club. And I think the players know that. Rotherham are finished. They, they, they're they not staying up. They, they, I don't think they can get any any result from now to the end of the season. And I do expect to beat them. Um, but, as I said, you know, and as Omar said, when when we've got to go there and get a win, we, we, we probably won. So I hope we don't look at it like that. I hope we just see it as this is Rotherham, this is the next week. Because we've got more chance of winning if the if we don't put too much pressure on ourselves. The last yeah. one was Boxing Day as well, Dan. I don't know if you've seen that, but you know, nah, like, not, if I there's any know, club to end it, it I, thought it, was, I thought it was before. I thought I think no. they won in January. Did they beat no, Middlesbrough in January? No, they beat Middlesbrough on Boxing Day, so that was the last win they nah, got okay. at home. And that before that, they hadn't. They've yeah, they, they've won two games as far as I can go on flash score. So that's how bad it is for them. I think know, they've like, won three or four games all season. Ridiculous, isn't Mental. it? But they played some teams really well. They played Ipswich really well. You know, that was a four three. Yeah. They I beat think they, Coventry. Beat Coventry. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I think Omar might have it in front of him, but mm. I don't they haven't been hammered. Teams haven't been going and hammering Rotherham. You know, it's been like a one uh, two. I am gonna beg Apart to from there, recently, they, yeah. they got fucked. <laughs> <like five, laughs> they they conceded, lost five they mil conceded. back to back. I think, yeah, so, so. I conceded ten. But other than that, recent recent results, if, if, if I'm not mistaken, or around them two, they they've not took a massive hiding. You know, they played teams pretty well. It feels um, like. I, sorry, go on, Joe. No, go on. I'm okay. Man. It feels like they've thrown the towel in. Is what I was going to say there. Yeah, so, yeah. definitely. Yeah, yeah I, I agree mean, with that. And go on, Dan. Oh no, no, you finished. I've got a nice point. So I, was, I, was, I was just going to say, yeah, and, and, and hopefully, you know, um, who have they got tomorrow? That's a great question. Preston. Preston. Oh, wow. So if, look, if, if they lose That's at Preston, if they lose at Preston, I, I think, you know, that is towel thrown in. And if we right. pick any any form of result up against West Brom, then yeah, have full confidence going down to Rotherham and, and, and ironing them out. So. Yeah, be, be, it could be a very could be a very good weekend for me. Well, a very good Easter weekend this because if I we can get four points, I think <laughs> off, I'll, I'll go on the fence and say we're safe if we get four points from these games. Well, I'll Jay, very, very what if we get six? Gonna... Like I said at the start of the show, what if we if get, get six? We're getting promoted. Yeah. What if we, <laughs> <laughs> what if we get six? Um, all right, it could happen. Well, listen, on on the on the uh, topic of being optimistic, all I'm going to say is Fred Onyedimer is not on their books anymore. He has He's been not. recalled from his loan spell, um, so there's at least one former line that can't come back to bite us on the arse this time. But <laughs> one thing interesting there, I'm just looking now. Rotherham on 20 points and uh, Birmingham on 39 uh, left, and there is eight games left this season, so they can get 24, so they can get up to 44. So I don't think we'll be the team to relegate them. We could we could be. Um, I think it might fall to the opponents the following week, very possibly. Um, but sometimes, if sometimes when teams are down the bottom, uh, they they have that sense of they've thrown the towel in. But then the pressure gets lifted, and they just seem to pick up the odd fluky result yeah. here and there. Mm. I think we've got to be really careful we don't fall victim to that. Yeah, I think we had it last season, albeit slightly different, with like the teams like Hull away, Wigan away last season. Wigan were fighting for their lives, but Hull were in mid-table mediocrity and nothing to play for. And it's like they're almost playing for their next contract or a move somewhere else, and there's no pressure on them. Um, and then maybe there is an element of that, but I think Rotherham are doomed. I mean, we talk about if like they lose on Friday, they're on 20 points. And what is that? Eight, eight games to go. So what, 24 points up for grabs? They're doomed. They're done. They're, they're, that's going to take us 44 points if they won all their all their games. And we're talking about us not being safe on 43 right now. So, yeah, look, they're, they're done for. But you're right. It could be double-edged with that. Um, but I'm not a better man, Dan. But if I were <laughs> we a better this. man... <laughs> a ben 20 Green pound... listening. <laughs> taking tips. £20, <laughs> £20 on Mules win on Friday and Monday returns you 130 quid. Just thought, you know, oh, hey. 
National oh, Park. National Park. You know what I mean? They should think really all over that. It's um, going to fall on Friday, but, you know, it's going to try him. You never know. Um, <laughs> also, I mean, I'm just looking at some of the other, other games down there. I think the key one that's jumping out to me at the moment is, is QPR v Birmingham, obviously. Definitely. That's 20th v 21st, and mm-hmm. not not both teams can win that one. So we could then know there's going to be at least one team below us dropping points this weekend. I think if you look at the other games as well, Plymouth have got to go to Norwich. That's a very difficult game. Stoke have got to go to Hull, a game very similar. Huddersfield have got Coventry, so... This weekend doesn't look like it's going to be a too kind weekend on paper to some of the teams that are down the bottom. Uh, at least Friday doesn't. So, And we play early, so there's a chance just to put a little bit of pressure on the other teams if we can get something out of that game. If we don't, then the other teams might see it and see that we maybe they've maybe got a chance to get back into it a little bit. So yeah, it'd be nice to go out there and, and lay down a marker early doors, wouldn't it? Well, not just them. You look at Blackburn's fixtures. I mean, Blackburn have got to play like the top four or top five, I think, in their last eight games. And they haven't won in like 13 games. I don't think John Eustace has registered a win yet. They've got got Ipswich, actually. I didn't see it because it wasn't on the three o'clock. There you go. So so they've got a lot of off the field problems as well, you know, as well as Eustace has been in charge for like 15 games, I believe, hasn't won. You know, and to go to now have to try and win this amount of games to start where you've got to play the top four or top five in your remaining eight games. I could see Blackburn dropping right into trouble. That only benefits us, even though we haven't picked any points up sitting here right now. Just the fixture list alone for Blackburn is enough to go, I can know that's a bit more daunting. If we could only get one point this weekend and Blackburn could get absolutely hammered, then they'd be below us. You know, yeah. they'd find it even harder. So I, I, I think, think points are hard to come by for everybody. I think while you're on about that subject, again, absolutely hammered as well. The goal difference is going to be key. We know under Harris traditionally we haven't taken too many hidings mm. I think it's important that if we are to lose a game we don't get a hiding because the goal difference yes. is quite tight we've actually got one of the slightly better goal differences at the minute which, which could be quite important come uh, May 4th yeah for sure mate I mean I think we'll be alright sure, we're going to win both games this weekend it's fine <laughs> right so I think that exactly. I think that leads us nicely <laughs> on to the <laughs> predictions segment Omar <laughs> You want to know my score lines for both games? Is that what you want? Yes, please. We'll have a we'll have a score we'll have a score line for both games, please, gents. Okay. Well, I'm not a betting man, Dan, but Jake Cooper's <laughs> eighteen to one to score on, on Friday, so he's gonna, he's gonna, this one's going to come for Cooper. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's gonna, and it's going to come on Friday. All right. I'm back Process of elimination. It's got to. Okay. I'm back to every game. And <laughs> to be honest, if you put a quid in. on every game this season and he only scored once, I reckon you'd still probably make profit. Well, it depends on the games. I mean, Stephen and uh, Ben will tell you about a bet we've done whilst in Blackburn for him to score. And it oh, didn't I've, quite happen, I've, seen, but I've seen the bet. Don't worry, mate. You said yeah. the bet to me. <laughs> so that was one thing. Uh, but look, I think, if I'm genuinely honest, it would be me all though. If, if we won on Friday, we'll lose on Monday. I think, look, I, I'm relatively confident ahead of the game on Friday. I'm going to go for... <sighs> Come on, I'm gonna go one nil Millwall. We're gonna nick it, home win, yeah. and um, it's your my Rotherham game as well. Or do you yeah, yeah, your Rotherham like, as well. Yeah, my Rotherham game. We're gonna win two nil, and Obafemi will probably get a couple up there. There you go. So okay. Cooper's gonna score like Friday, and Obafemi's gonna score twice on Monday. There you go. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> Double clean sheet for the weekend. I'm I'm gonna say one all Friday. Um, I've been pretty alright at my predictions recently. I predicted two one Southampton, two nil Leeds, one nil Birmingham. So I'm gonna say one all. And uh, hope I lose for a win and, it, and not for a loss. But I'm going to say one all, and I'm going to say, oh, I'm going to say Zian Fleming scores. Like it. And I'm going to say, I'm going to say 3 0 Rotherham. And I'm going to say Oberfemi gets two and Cooper gets the other. Here we go. There we go. Well, Omar, as Jay just said, he's on he's on good form. I know you're not a betting man, but I think that that's something uh, worth considering. Yeah. Um, I also I also backed um, what's it called a one nil win against um, against uh, uh, Birmingham. Birmingham too. So I mean, I'm not a betting man as well, Dan. But um, <laughs> Cooper is a uh, good odds to score next Monday as well. So there you go. <laughs> there you go. Um, I'll, I'll go now. I'll, I'll go. I'm going to go for a a nil nil on Friday. I think we'll keep a clean sheet. I think it'll be a very hard fought point. Um, one where I think we'll probably be clinging on rather than pushing for a point, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and then I think I think we'll beat Rotherham two one on Monday. I think we'll 
I think a little bit of what I said, I think we might take to almost take it easy because it's because it's Rotherham. I think we might go a goal down. I think at half time Harris will give him an absolute bollocking. I think we'll come out second half and I think um I'm gonna go Ryan Leonard with one of his long shots to get us back into the game at one one. <laughs> and then I think Abafemi will will nick the winner probably Probably in the last 10, 15 minutes. Not as late as Birmingham, please, lads, because you're taking a few years off my life at this point. Yeah. All three of us have gone over Femi to score on Monday. So, I mean, yeah, yeah, we have, yeah. I mean, but look, one thing I would ask that, say back to anyway, to play Devils Africa, would you take two two draws this weekend? I would. I think I probably honest. would, yeah. I'd I take, the points, that, yeah. take the points on the board, innit? And just, you know, yeah, yeah. start to claw away. If, as long as we don't lose this weekend, don't let other teams catch us. Just take two points, move on. And, and as, as, I, as I said at the start of the video, there's so many teams down there, so many teams that have got to play each other. You know, mm -hmm. near enough most weeks, at least one team down there is going to drop points. So it'd be nice to get survival secured sooner rather than later. I think we've had, uh, to be honest, I'll take the end of season fun ending now. If, if you said to me, yeah. uh, <laughs> you can win your next two games and you're safe, I'd be like, right, fantastic, let's get it done. I don't want to be going into Plymouth at home and, and Swansea away needing results. So, yeah. Um, no, yeah, sure. that's going to be it. Gents, any, any final thoughts? Uh, no, just roll on Friday. And if I see you, if anyone's going Rotherham Monday, say hello. Um, I won't be in Tox K because I'll be driving. So you might get a good side of me. And yeah, that makes to a it. change. <laughs> uh, Jay? Yeah, no, just uh, pack the den on Friday. Um, get down there and, and uh, join Omar at the away end at Rotherham and, on, and give us some support. And hopefully we come away with a... Uh, with uh, some relatively good things to say, and that the next pod will uh, be cheering with some champagne at possible safety rather than drowning into some Stellas on uh, taking Rotherham for granted, as we spoke about. <laughs> that would be nice, wouldn't it? Um, just to make everyone aware before before we sign this off, um, there is going to be no Sunday live this week due to the scheduling of the games. So we are going to do a live on Friday night after the West Brom game. It's a good bit more of a reflection and then a preview of Rotherham. We won't be live on Sunday. We will be live on Monday after the Rotherham game, providing we can get enough people. I think we should be able to get enough people uh, yeah. to be able to, yeah. to do to do something for you guys. So, um, And obviously, if, if we're short, um, message the podcast. Everyone message Omar. Um, he's he's our leader. He is our <laughs> commander in chief for the we'll next. We'll get Omar on the phone on his car on the way out. Yeah, well, exactly. I mean, so, it's three o'clock. I might be back. You never know. It might surprise yeah, you. Yeah, possibly. If I fly down the way back, I might be make it back from Monday night. But we'll see. Possibly. <laughs> um, so everyone who's uh, been listening, thank you very much for your time and support. It's greatly appreciated. Um, if you're listening on YouTube or if you've been listening on Spotify, if you're listening on YouTube, comment below. If you're listening on Spotify, go on to our Twitter, X feed, whatever it's called now. Comment below. We want three predictions from you. First, we want your West Brom score. Second of all, we want your uh, Rotherham score. And third of all, we want the celebrity you think Mickey Simpson is going to look the most like when he comes back. <laughs> and when he listens to this back, this is going to be my last appearance on the podcast. So thank you very much, everyone. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. Um, and from that, uh, that middle podcast, over and out.